Praise God. Let's go before Father. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for your love and your compassion. Thank you, Father God, for your word of truth that is about to go forth tonight. Amen. Father God, we believe that your word will reach out to those people who may not even be in attendance tonight and who may not even hear this message, Father God, in several days or even hours to come. But as we record this message, Father God, your same anointing, your same spirit, your same word is infiltrating these recordings. And we believe, Father God, that people who do hear it through any other kind of outlet media, they will be able to grab hold to your word, Father God, from days and weeks and years to come. And we believe, Father God, that their lives will be the better for it because They've heard your word. We thank you, Lord Jesus. To that end, Father God, I submit myself to your spirit, soul, and body. Use my mind, use my heart, use my mouthpiece to minister your word to your people this day. <coughs> and we covenant with you right now, Father God, to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory for every victory that will come out of today's session. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen, and thanks be to God. I want you all to turn your Bibles to the book of Leviticus, chapter 25. Leviticus 25. We are on the verge of Resurrection Sunday. We're on the verge of that. Uh, so many of us, we want to call it Easter Sunday. And the Bible does, does refer to Easter. Does refer to Easter. Uh, about Easter, but it ain't got nothing to do with the bunnies and the eggs and, you know, the Catbury bunny and, you know, the, the Reese's peanut butter egg chocolate thing that we think we so darn good. It ain't, that ain't got nothing to do with uh, the resurrection. It ain't got nothing to do with the <laughs> burial or resurrection of Jesus Christ. Nothing, 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 nothing at all. <laughs> but I'm going to show you all some, uh, some different things tonight. We're going to climax this teaching this Sunday in Sunday morning service. So don't miss it. Show up. God is doing some great things, man. Um... Uh, He's doing some great things, and he's opened the doorway to me, and I do believe I had a spirit of God, and, you know, let's get right on to it, because I, I'm excited to teach on this, because I had a, I lived when God first revealed it to me, and some of you all, it may be uh, old information, but to me, it's brand new, and when anything becomes fresh to me, I, I like to share it. I really, really like to share. So, Leviticus chapter 25. Leviticus chapter 25. I want you all to see this. It says, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them. Notice, I want you to say that. I want y'all really, really catch that. Really, really catch that. Because sometimes when you'll just be, when you'll get the reading, you'll see something. And, and you think you heard it, but you didn't. Look at this. Here God, the Lord, he's speaking directly to Moses and saying, I want you to go say this to them. Why is that so significant? Because a lot of people, there's men, there's men and women of God all around this world. And they're saying, thus saith the Lord. And a lot of us ain't even believing. We, we just, we, we're dismissing it. We, we're classifying it in some kind of worldview. We're classifying it. We, we just throwing it off into <clears throat> a, a potluck to where everybody got opinions. Remember, God's word is not an opinion. So... Why would the Bible have to come specifically out and say, it says, speak unto the ch children of Israel and say unto them. Look what he said, say unto them. 
when ye come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. A Sabbath, a Sabbath, a Sabbath, a Sabbath. Notice it says, when you go into this specific land, it didn't say anything about keeping a Sabbath before you get to a specific land. I want you all, when y'all get in there, when you get in there, this is what I want you to start doing. Don't y'all see that right now? When you get in there that I'm going to give you, you, so you start keeping, start keeping, start keeping. Look what it says in verse 3. Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years thou shalt, or six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard, and gather in the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for the Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy field, nor prune thy vineyard. Now, you started to pick up the law of the Sabbath now. Now, this is so cool, this is so cool and unique to me. Notice how it's set on a six year time frame. <laughs> Every seven years, they were supposed to let the land rest and don't do anything to it. I want you to take that. I want you to take that. I want you to look at where we're at today in our society, where companies are open seven days a week, some places 24 hours a day. Hmm. And here God is saying, take a break in the seventh year. Make all the money you can Produce all the crops that you can within those that six years, but in that seventh year, take a break. Here real soon, I'm going to get ready to start another page on uh, Facebook, and it's going to be a petition, the Spirit of God has been putting it on my heart, to start a petition to urge businesses to cut back to just a six-day work week. See, y'all, man, we 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 about following the word here, man. It, it's, it's, this this is not a game. It's not a game. It's not a game. I thought you've been talking about the resurrection. We are. I want you to really, really see this Sabbath thing. That what God really means about this Sabbath. What it really, really want to mean about this Sabbath. See, the Jews, they get so caught up in on a Sabbath day, not doing work. Not physically getting up, going out, no, sowing crops, and don't let your donkey. Jesus even asked them. He said, "Don't you, any one of you guys?" They were talking to Jesus, talking about he healed somebody on the Sabbath day. He said, "Don't you guys? Don't you even take the uh, the saddles off your donkeys and let them go out to pasture on the Sabbath?" So is that physical work? What was he referring to? He was talking about sitting down and taking not just a day of rest, but a day to hear from him. You're not listening! You're not listening. I don't mean to scream at some of y'all, but you're not listening. You're not. You're playing this game. You're going through the motions again with the religious mindset. Taking a moment to sit down and hear from him. Watch this. This is why I say this. Look what he said. He said, Thou shalt take them, thou shalt prune thy vineyard, and gather, uh, gather in the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year shall be, shall, uh, shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for the Lord. A Sabbath for who? The Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy field, nor prune thy vineyard. A, uh, for who? The Lord. It ain't got nothing to do with you. <laughs> but that's the law. That you are under the old covenant. You pre that you go. You preaching legalism again. Mm. Even in today's time, we should sit down. That why do you think we should sit down? I mean, why, why do you think? Why do you think every year, or at least once a year, people go on vacations? 
at least once a year, to go sit down, to rejuvenate, to hear from God, to get back at it again. Look what it says. Thou should, I'm, I'm verse 5, that which groweth of its own accord of thy harvest, thou shalt not reap, neither gather the grapes of thy vine, undressed, for it is the year of rest unto the land. Yeah. Notice he said, even in that year, when you see things grow in the land, let it be. Let it be. Why? So that the earth itself can rejuvenate itself. Grapes and vine, grapes and bananas, all that stuff will fall right back down to the ground. It's going to marinate back to the earth and eventually, within, within that one year, it's going to cultivate itself. And then that, that very first year, that very first year, I have just learned this. That first year is when God, when you first start uh, pruning back fruits again, going to go get the fruits and stuff off the ground, I'm going to get the fruits off the stuff of the trees. That will be considered what? First fruits. Well, the first fruits, after you have let the land rest, you'll be able to go get the first fruits and you offer up the first fruits to God. You hear that? Look what it says here. Verse, uh, verse 6. And the Sabbath of the land shall be for meat for who? You. Now, he's talking about taking a rest. He said, that's also bringing it back for you. For thee and for thy servant and for thy maid, and for thy hired servant, and for thy stranger that sojourneth with thee, and for thy cattle, and for the beast of the land. Notice how God is, think of, he, God is also making this available to everybody else. Think about it. All of the beasts of the land, they on the earth, all that stuff is falling down to the ground, and the beasts just go ahead and having themselves a big old field day. They getting themselves rest. For a whole year. You ain't cracking them with your whip. We've gone to so much in mass production in our time to where scientists will tell you, crop owners, I mean, people who are out there farmers and produce, they'll tell you right now, the nutrients that's supposed to be in the fruits, they're not there anymore. They, they're not doing this principle. They're injecting the ground with so many different chemicals and so many different, uh, no, they're growing cows and calves, and they put all the different anti antibiotics. Antibiotics is doing more than just killing. Now, don't hear me, please hear me. You, you may need to go get some antibiotics and you get some kind of form of, of uh, infection or whatever in your body. But they pumping these inf uh, stuff just all the time into these animals, and it's killing off all of the nutrients that supposed to be there. Okay, here we go. What does that have to do? Let the people just take a rest every six days? What does it got to do with anything? Watch this, what it says here. Watch this, verse eight. And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee seven times, seven years, and the space of the seven Sabbath of years shall be unto thee 40 and nine years. Notice how he, God is even breaking down the year uh, of a year now. He said, every year I want you to break it down. You'll number your site. You go through six years, that seventh year, Sabbath year, making it break it down seven times. So what's seven times seven? 49. 49th year. In that 49th year, look what he says. In that 49 years, verse 9. Thou shalt, thou, then thou, then, Lord, put these things back on. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of what? Jubilee Amen. to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month in the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout what? All your land. And ye shall hallow the fifth, the fiftieth year and proclaim what? Liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee where? Amen. Unto you ye shall return every man unto his passion, I mean his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. Now, I want, now don't, let's not get to the bottom part of that. Let's deal with the first part. He said, 
that this is supposed to be a year of jubilee for who? You, Lord. You. It's supposed to be a jubilee for who? Yes. You. Okay. It's supposed to be a jubilee for who? Yes. You. Jubilee for what? You. Yes. During the course of this time, remember, we live in a day and age where people are producing things and it's on a monetary system to where you have to go purchase this stuff, these services with money and then use those services. You go to a job. Most jobs nowadays is, is set up on an indentured servant, indentured servitude. Saying, I will come work for you for X amount of days, X amount of hours, X amount of years, every single day. You know, Joseph was a boy that Jacob, he did that with his uncle. Yeah. He became an indentured servant, and he said he, all, he got money and crops off of whatever was left over from what his uncle did not use. When we go to our jobs, we work for them 30, 40, 25 hours a week, or whatever, how many hours a week, and then they give you a paycheck. That's indentured servitude. We have the smallest form of it nowadays. That's what these people were doing at the time, but they were only doing it with crops. They were doing it with cattle. Why is that so important? I want you to really, really pick up on that. If you could not afford to go out and purchase yourself a home, a piece of land, because that's what everybody bought at that time, to build yourself a home or to start yourself a cattle business or whatever, you would sell yourself during the course of sell your lands. And sell, if you own land, you will sell a part of that off to somebody else. And then they will give you money for that so you can go purchase land or whatever it is you want to do with that. After the, when in the 50th year, then you would, if you lost that, you would get that back in that 50th year. Nowadays, when you do a bill of sale nowadays, it's yours. Unless you, unless you get dumb and the government found a way to tax land. <laughs> Caesar does that now. If you don't pay tax on your land, then the government will confiscate your land. You, 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 better, you better hear me very, very carefully because some of y'all are hearing this and then you're not. Wake up. Don't let Satan rock you here to sleep in this type of teaching because notice we, we just said it already. This year of Jubilee is for you. Check that word jubilee out. I want you to check that word jubilee out. So you're going to, we're going to dip down into that just a little bit deeper in a second. He says this, verse, verse 12. For it is the jubilee. Yeah, no, hold on. Go back up, verse 11. A jubilee shall that a jubilee shall that fifth year be unto you. Ye shall not sow, neither reap that which groweth of itself in it, nor, nor gather the, thy, the grapes in it of thy vine undressed. For it is the jubilee. It shall be holy unto who? You. you. Not unto God. Unto you. Notice how God is specifically stressing this jubilee mm -hmm. to you. The word jubilee itself, it means freedom. The word jubilee means what? Freedom. Freedom. Watch this, what it said. Watch, watch, watch what it said. Watch this. This is so cool right here. So cool. Verse 12. For it, shall, for it is the jubilee, it shall be holy unto you. Ye shall eat the increase thereof out of the field. Hold on, but I thought we weren't sowing anything or gather anything. How are you going to eat something that you did not go gather? Mm. Oh, glory to God. Woo, let's get into this, man. This getting so cool. Mm. In the year of this, verse 13, in the year of this jubilee, ye shall return every man unto his possession. Notice, it becomes a freedom to all those who was oppressed through either through they sold something or somebody took something when they get, went into this land. Why? So that people 
will receive the right to be free, even if it took some time to get to it, they'll still end up being free. Everybody read up and say, God, God is a God, God of freedom. freedom. Watch what it said in verse 14. And if thou sell aught unto thy neighbor, or buyest aught of thy neighbor's hand, ye shall not oppress one another. Notice how he said, you ain't going to go overcharge people. Right. You ain't gonna go overcharge people. You know how the housing market is today? They they got a house that's worth forty thousand dollars, and they turn right around trying to sell it to you for a hundred thousand. Yeah. Make a sixty thousand dollar profit. Thinking in my head like, are you tripping? I understand if you want to make a six thousand dollar profit, but uh, you ain't gonna make no six thousand dollar profit on me when the house only worth forty thousand. Now I don't care if you make some money. If you want to sell it to me for sixty thousand, you want to make a twenty thousand dollar profit. Praise God. Go ahead, man. Make your money. Make your money. But some of the, all lot of this other stuff is beginning to be downright greed. Watch what it's saying right here. According to the verse 15, it's so, it's so significant now. Watch, we're going to do a turning point here. If I say turning point. Turning. According to the number of years after the Jubilee, thou shalt buy of thy neighbor and according unto the number of years of the fruits, he shall sell unto thee. Now it gets into, now here's the logistics part of it. If you are in the 35th year, notice it's 50 years, if you're in the 35th year and you want to sell a piece of profit, you only have 14 more years for that, uh, for that, I mean, for 15 more years before the year of Jubilee, Jubilee come. You know in 15 years, you're going to get your, la your land or your possession back. You cannot turn right around and sell it to this person over here for way astronomical price, knowing that you're going to get it back in 15 years. Now you say, well, that's 15 years, 15 years. 15 years, I've learned it's not, it's not that long. It, it really isn't. Not that, I, not that I'm understanding, I've gotten a little older, and I'm starting to see some stuff. 15 years is not that far off. <laughs> well, you already old and know. I've gained a little bit of wisdom and understanding about this. Why is this so significant? Because God already knew if I try to sell it, for so much money, I'm going to, you don't eventually have to give it back to me. Mm -hmm. Now I've just defrauded you because I, I gained way too much money off of this possession. Mm -hmm. Why is that significant? It goes, if you want to get deeper into the price of it, it says in verse 17, Ye shall not therefore oppress one another, but thou shalt fear thy God. For I am the Lord your God. Notice, God is setting this thing. He said, I am the Lord your God. Wherefore ye shall do my statutes and keep my judgments and do them, and ye shall dwell in the land where I how? In safety. In safety. What does this got to do with anything with the Passover? I want you to hold your finger there. We're going to come back to it. I want you to go over to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 61. This might be a very familiar verse to some of you guys. Everything God does in his word is for a reason. He, he sets it up strategically. Notice the book of Leviticus was way over here with Moses when things was being instituted in the law. Now the law, if you go read the book of Hebrews, it says that the law was set up for a foreshadowing of things to come. God was setting the standard with Moses about what was going to happen some years later. Now here is Isaiah, the prophet, proclaiming what God originally meant when he set that in motion with the law. 
Isaiah 61, look at the verse 1 says. He says, the Spirit of the Lord, verse 1, the Spirit of the Lord is upon, uh, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord hath the point anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to buy up the brokenhearted to proclaim what? Liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Look what it says. To proclaim what? The acceptable, the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them what? Beauty for ashes. And oil for the joyful morning, the oil, and the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, they that they may might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that He might be glorified. Watch this. Look what it says. Verse one: to proclaim what liberty or what freedom. Oh, what? Proclaim what? Jubilee, Jubilee. to captives. Mm. Oh, really? yeah. mm. What? Who, who made this? This is Isaiah. Proclaiming this for a specific group of people. Remember how it says, if we be heir, I mean, if we be Abraham's seed, then we are heirs according to the promise. Here you go. Here you go right here. This Jubilee. What do you think the resurrection is all about, people? Y'all better catch this. See, some of y'all looking at me, you, you're half asleep. You ain't really paying attention. You, some of y'all ain't really paying attention. You ain't gravitating hold to it. This year of Jubilee is pointing directly to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Point straight to it. God was setting the standard. He just couldn't say in, in the book of Leviticus, I'm talking about Jesus, y'all. <laughs> Jesus wasn't born yet. Remember how Jesus was walking in the earth and he was saying that Abraham and Moses and the old patriarchs, they had loved to see the day when Jesus was coming, when he would be on the earth. Jesus was talking about that. And they said, Gene, you ain't even 50 years old. Who do you think you is? Who do you think? Boy, you little not root of poop. Boy, don't we know Joseph, your daddy, and we know Mary, too. And you're your brother and sister. Who do you think you is? Go on about you barely 30 years old. You ain't even 50 yet. You ain't old enough, boy. No, nothing, boy. <laughs> Jesus said, I don't care what you say. When you search, he said over in the book of Luke, he said, when you search the scriptures, you search them because you think you're looking for me. And you're right. Here, 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 here Isaiah proclaiming this year of Jubilee. You find Jesus going in Holy Family right there. Come on now, let's go. Go to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Here Jesus is making his proclamation. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Jesus come and he make he when remember when he was in the, he was in his Capernaum and he was looking for I mean not Capernaum when he was in uh, uh, Nazareth and he was in there uh, going to the church mm -hmm. to the synagogue mm -hmm. and get ready to read the scriptures yeah. and he said he specifically looked for a specific scripture in the book of Isaiah and then he started proclaiming he started reading from it and then he said look what he says in verse eighteen. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the what? Captives, recovering of sight to the blind, and to set what? Jubilee or liberty to them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Drop down to verse 21. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. He just set out to proclaim, he, uh, he was proclaiming exactly 
what God started doing when he was making the 50th year, making the 50th year to uh, be a, a year of jubilee, that 50th year, that 50th year, that 50th year, that 50th year. Most of you all don't know this, and we're going to back, we back it up. I don't know we're going to finish this on second. We're going to finish it today. Most of you all don't know this. When Jesus came, and when he came on the earth, notice it's the 50th year. How old was Jesus when he died? 30, about 33 years old. Jesus came 33 years before that 50th year. So add 33 plus 17. That's 50. 50 years. Jesus was born 17 years into or after that, that last jubilee. When Jesus showed up in the earth, he only had 33 more years before that 50th jubilee year. Glory to God! <laughs> he, came, he showed up and he became that jubilee for you and me. That's why he kept making the statement in the book of Leviticus. He said, hey, this year Jubilee is for you. Freedom. It's more than just a Sabbath day to sit down and take a rest. It's more than just a day for a um, vacation that you had that we see up today. This, this year is for you. Mm. I got a hold of that. I said, Lord Jesus, man, so who am I to try to say, try to come up with some Easter bunnies and eggs <laughs> to try to make it seem like, he said, no, 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 God don't care about me eating the Easter bunny. He don't care about me having a Reese's peanut butter cups with a thing of Pepsi, the egg, that peanut butter cup is shaped like an egg. God, that thing be so good, man. <laughs> well, you can eat them all the time. <laughs> He don't know my thing. My blood sugar be way up here. God set this thing up in motion for us so that we can live this life how? Free. 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 It's all paid for and bought by the blood of Jesus blood Christ. Of Jesus Christ. So who are we to try to denounce this? Oh man, it's good stuff right here. Look what Jesus did. Oh, and know that he said they got so mad at Jesus over in the book of Luke chapter 4. They got so mad at Jesus. What did it say? What did it say? What did it say? Uh, drop all the way down. No, what is it? 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 The verse. Oh, Lord Jesus. I think it's verse 42. What does it say that way? They're going to throw them head first. They want to they, they, they are so mad at you when they get mad. They get mad at you and they, they want to kill them. <laughs> they led them out to a country. Where's it, where, where it at? It's somewhere around there now. They got, yeah, there go verse 29. And they ran in verse 20, 20, 20, 29. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him unto the brow of the hill wherein, whereon their city was built. No, they built up on a big old mountain, big old hill. That they might cast him down headlong, head first. They wanted to kill Jesus because he said, I'm the one here to proclaim this. Who do you think you is, Jesus? Really? And Jesus says, I'm here to help free you guys. Freedom. Notice, all this is connected to his resurrection. Look what it says. Look what it says uh, over there in the book of Hebrews. Chapter 7. I know we're going to go through all these scriptures today. And man, you better get this word. Because here we are living this life and we need freedom. And we got we got all, so many different things that we, I want to watch this on TV. I want to do that. I want to see this. I, what about the fun? Man, I'm going to have fun later. 
I need to get in this word and find out what covenants I have in my God that Jesus made available to me. After them football players get through making their millions of dollars, I'm, sometimes I'm, hey, hey, Lord, they made their millions of dollars. Here I am still trying to figure out how to pay the light bill. I'm going after God. Look what it says. Uh, Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. Look what it says. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 7. Verse 14. For it is evident, oh Lord, for it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, which, which of, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Notice, if you go back and look through the book of Leviticus, Moses didn't speak anything about a priest coming out of Judah. None whatsoever. And it is yet for more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there arises another priest who is made not after the law of carnal commandment, but after the power of what? Endless life. Notice how he's saying that this year of Jubilee that we're referring to right now, it was not created out of just a law, some kind of rule that God was putting down. And that's where a lot of the Jews people, a lot of Jewish people, they missed it. A lot of the Israelites, they missed it. The Sadducees and Pharisees, they missed it because there was a law. No, the law says we cannot do this. The law says, and all of a sudden, that law ended up becoming a bondage to people, and it wasn't benefit nobody. Notice what he said. Well, look what he said. Well, look what he said. Look what he said. Well, look what he said. Not a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. For he testified, thou art a priest for out forever after the order of Melchizedek. Why is he keep rising referring to Melchizedek? Because Melchizedek showed up. Look up the word Melchizedek. It means man or God of righteousness. That's what his name is, means righteousness. So Melchizedek, we know he was just a man. But that's what his name meant. And God showed up in the same, God, God showed up to Abraham in the very same spirit that was on Melchizedek. That's what Abraham offered him the tithe. And then Melchizedek turned right around and offered him what? The communion. The blood and the bread. What's the bread stand for? The breaking of the body. The blood, the wine represent the blood, the shedding of Jesus Christ's blood. Look what he says. Look what he says. For there is verily a disannulling a, a of the commandment going before, going before for the weakness of I mean, and unprofitableness of, I mean, thereof, un, unprofitableness thereof. For the law made nothing perfect. But the bringing in of a better hope did by the which we draw near unto God. Notice, that law that God set down in the book of Leviticus about Jubilee, that didn't really profit them any. Look at where it's gotten us today because people, they won't let the land rest, one thing. And even then, people were selling stuff and then when the year of Jubilee did come, they were still, what they weren't giving people back their stuff. It wouldn't benefit anybody. I see y'all playing games, man. Look what it said. And in so much as not without an oath, he was made priest. For those priests were made without an oath. But this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear, oh, you ain't gonna swear none. The Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a what? Better yeah. testament. Notice, God says, okay, there's nobody, Jesus, 
You going to go and you going to be this jubilee for them and you not going to repent from it. You not going to turn back. Jesus was challenged with that because God, he knew it was going to happen. And when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he was praying, he said, I want to turn back. I got to take on these deep folks. Don't even want me here. They trying to kill me. And Jesus said, he said, not my will be done, but thine will. He knew God before Hebrews was ever even written. Jesus knew that God said, I swear I'm going to deliver them. Making this year of Jubilee better for us, not just some laws that was written. Glory to God, man. Praise Jesus. Woo! Look what he said. 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 Verse 23. Oh, Lord, I got four minutes. My time. Come on, let's get this. For they truly were, therefore they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continued forever, have an unchangeable priesthood. This man, notice, it's not even referring to Melchizedek anymore. But this man, because he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. He's referring to Jesus himself. Glory to God. For such a high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. Notice how we, we know God has given Jesus a, a name that is above all names. Mm -hmm. And all things must be put under his feet. Watch, 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 watch this, watch this. Watch, 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 wait, 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 Drop down. Oh, we almost there. Who need, what the verse 27, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice for, for his own sins, and then for the peoples, for this he did once when he offered up himself. Remember, up under the Levitical law, all of the priests, they used to have to go into the tabernacle. Uh, 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 they had to go to the holiest of holies, and they would have to take a sacrifice, a sacrificial lamb, or somebody in there, or something in there, or whatever the law required, ten doves, two chickens, and five birds, or whatever. They would have to go in there and offer up those sacrifices. They would also have to bring the sacrifice in there for themselves. Not just for the person or people that they was going in there for. Notice, it, why would it make that statement that they had to bring a sacrifice in there? Jesus, he didn't have to bring a sacrifice in there for himself because he was sinless. So he was the only one to go in there and offer up a sacrifice for people or mankind as a whole and be in the clear of himself because he never committed one sin. So when he offered up himself, he became that jubilee for us. Mm. Mm. Last verse, look what it says. For the law, for the law maketh men high priests, which have what? Infirmity or weaknesses. They have flaws and faults. But, oh, but the word of the oath, which was since the law, make of the son who is consecrated forevermore. So this oath that God said, Jesus, you got to go. Go. You're going to become the jubilee for these people. They need you. They can't do this without you. 
And Jesus says, not my will be done, but thine will. Who am I to even remotely say I should live holy? When Jesus made it available to me, who am I to go around and say I have evil in my heart? When this love of God has been shared abroad in my heart. Because Jesus died, rose from the dead, and now seated at the right hand of the Father for me. To bring me this jubilee. To bring me this freedom. And for me to go after anything else and put anything else above him. Father, Forgive us, for we know not what we do. We need you, Lord. And I'm out of time, three minutes ago. Hey, remember, continue to learn how to follow Jesus Christ. Faithfully, holy, and holy. I'll see y'all next time.